in Providence St. John family and guests, this is the day that the Lord has made. So let's decide to rejoice and be glad in it this morning. Let's decide to put our hands together. Let's decide to give God praise. Let's bless him. Thank you, God, for the activity of our limbs. Thank you, God, for waking us this morning in our right minds. Thank you, God, for just being so good to us and loving us in spite of ourselves. We are so grateful that we're able to come and praise your name today. No matter where you are, you can give God praise. Isn't that good to know? No matter where you are, you can give God praise. I'm Minister Vanessa Flood, and I'm going to be your worship leader for this morning. We ask that if you come on in, if you're coming in, um, join us, like us, share this page so that somebody else can experience the fellowship with us. And right now, I'm not even going to stay in your way. I'm going to turn it over to this dynamic praise team who is going to lead us in praise and worship this morning. Hallelujah. Anybody come to bless the Lord this morning? Come on, y'all come to bless the Lord this morning? I can't hear you. I can't hear you though, anyway. But come on, let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we serve a sovereign, good God. Y'all believe that he's good? Is he great though? Come on, our God has been great. Hallelujah. And we just come to bless him for being our great Jehovah. He's an awesome God. Let's bless him. You are God and you're in control. Seated high, you are Lord of all. Great I am, sovereign ruler, lion of Judah. You are God, say you are God. And you're in control. Seated high, Seated high. you are Lord.
into and are safe. Just his name. We're just talking about a name, y'all. Hallelujah. To his holy and blessed and righteous and wonderful and magnificent name. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for letting us be able to call on the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, that you're good and your mercy endures forever. Thank you that you are everlasting, Jesus. Thank you, God, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That you will not leave us, nor will you forsake us, God. We just thank you. We thank you for who you are, God. We just want to take just a minute to bless you just for who you are. Just for who you are, God. Think about who he is to you. What do you call him? Healer, savior, provider. We bless your holy name, God. You are wonderful. You are awesome. You are magnificent and excellent and perfect in all of your ways, God. And we thank you so much. We bless you, Father, for this worship moment. Thank you for this time of worship. Thank you that we can feel your very presence resting on us, God. We bless you. God, right now, I just want to ask that you touch my brothers and sisters who are watching and who are listening, that whatever it is that they stand in need of, God, that they dare to call on your name, Jesus. Lord, please hear and answer every prayer. We know that you're able. And we thank you in advance that you've already done it, that you've already worked out every situation, whether it's the way that we've expected you to or not. You are God. You are sovereign. And you can move the way that you want to. And we thank you just for being God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is always a mistake to have me talk after the praise team praises and worships the Lord it's always a mistake because there's something that just wells up in me there's something that I cannot contain and I don't apologize for it I know who they're singing about I know who they're singing about and I would challenge you if you don't know him yet you might want to get to know him I promise you there's such peace there's such joy hallelujah all right, I'm going to try to get to these announcements here. Whew. So our announcements for this week. There's an urgent call for servant ministry partners. PSJBC is seeking a few willing workers to assist. Facilities management is a part of the light maintenance team. The team's going to consist of a small crew of individuals who can volunteer doing maintenance, such as light cleaning of our church on Saturdays. And this team is vital and necessary to our ongoing efforts to keep our sanctuary clean and ready for use. We need you. If you're willing, if you're a willing servant, please email Lawrence Winston at facilities at psjbc.org or contact Reverend Kevin Montague directly at kmontague at psjbc.org to become a servant partner today. Also, the Family Ministries Department needs you. We're looking for ministry partners to join our couples ministry planning team and form a singles ministry planning team. If you're interested in being a part of the planning teams for couples or singles, please go to our website, www.psjbc.org, and complete the interest form. Our activities for the week, we've got life class immediately following this service, our 9 a.m. worship. So head on over to Life Class as we study the book of John. You can click on virtual the virtual activities link in our website to log in, and we do hope to see you there. On Tuesdays, we ask that you join us for our Recharge Bible Study at 7.30 p.m. As we continue our study on the book of Daniel, we're on chapter 7. Recharge Bible Study will be live via Zoom conference, Facebook, and YouTube, and the link is available via our website. On Wednesdays, you can join us for our intercessory prayer call. If you know that you have the gift of intercession, meaning that you just feel compelled to pray for somebody else on somebody else's behalf, to stand in the gap for somebody else, join the intercessory prayer call.
For more information about our events, please visit our website, psjbc.org, and click on virtual events. That is all of our announcements for today. We ask that you govern yourselves accordingly. And after we hear one more selection from this amazing praise team, you will hear the voice of none other than our pastor, Reverend Billy T. Staten, Jr. Amen.
favor, just go ahead and hunt up the screen or just go ahead and lift up your hands and give God glory and give God praise for he is great and greatly to be praised. We magnify you. We thank you, God. Thank you, God, for praise and worship. Thank you, God, for this amazing music ministry that you have granted us here at the Providence St. John Baptist Church. I am just overjoyed of everything that is happening right now. Come on and hunt up the screen. Thank God for what he is doing already, already, already. God, we give you praise. We magnify you. We glorify you. We thank you for the worship experience that we have had thus far. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. His name is above every name. And we thank him. Glory to your name, Jesus. Have a word of prayer with me. Our Father and our God, we do thank you. We magnify you. We give you glory and praise, for you are great and greatly to be praised. We thank you for life, health, and strength, God. We thank you for being with us all this week. You brought us again by virtual experience to worship you. Thank you, God, that everyone that's on right now is designed and purposed to be on. I pray, God, right now that you minister continuously to every soul that is viewing right now, God. And I pray for those that are just joining in, God, that you would speak to their hearts as only you can. Thank you, God, that we can worship you in spirit and in truth, that we can glorify you, that we can magnify you, that we can lift up your name. God, no matter where we are, you hear our praise and you hear our worship. And so, God, we magnify you. We thank you. We bless you for just the fact that we're breathing and in our right mind. Thank you for the activity of our limbs. Thank you, God, for the ability just to click on to a screen, God, and be able to hear worship, God. We thank you for being kind and gracious to us, God, throughout this entire week. God, we thank you for the justice that you allow to happen in Minnesota. God, we lift up your name and thank you for the justice that was served. And God, we know that there is more justice to be served. And we pray right now, God, that you bring an end to all of these uh, senseless killings, God. We ask, God, that you bring an end to all of the pain that we're going through as a people, God. We ask, God, for your strength right now and peace right now. We ask, God, for all those families that have lost loved ones to senseless violence by law enforcement, God. We ask, God, that you would touch those families and be the, uh, a, a hedge around them and grant them the love and the peace that they need. Now, God, I ask that you make preaching easy. Stand strong in my body, think with my mind, and speak with my tongue. I give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Go ahead and heart up the screen. Heart up the screen, heart up the screen. I just love the fact that they was just singing, your name is above every name. I just love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Can you just type that on the screen? Your name is above every name. God, your name is above every name. It's good to worship the Lord our God and to give him glory and to give him praise. He is a mighty God. He is a powerful God. He is a prayer answering God. 
His name is above every name. My God, I love, I love to worship God. I love to worship him because he is great and greatly to be praised. I just thank him. Just thank him. I just thank you. Wherever you are in your home, wherever you are, just go ahead and lift up your voice right where you are and just give God glory and give God praise. We magnify him. We thank him. We bless him. He is great and greatly to be praised. God, we magnify you. We thank you, God, for how great and how awesome you are. Thank you for how powerful you are. Thank you that you're a prayer answering God. Thank you that you never come short of your promises. Thank you that you always answer our prayers. Thank you, God, that you sit high and you look low. Thank you, God, that you are great and greatly to be praised. Thank you, God, that when nobody else is around, you're right there with us. God, we thank you. We magnify you. We give you glory and we give you praise, God. We magnify you. We thank you. Go ahead and lift up your hands right there in your room. Lift, open up your mouths. Declare that he is God. Walk around your house and declare that he is God. Lay your hands on your children. Claim that your children are blessed. Lay your hands on yourself and say that you are blessed. Go ahead and claim it right now. He's worthy of all praise. God, we magnify you. We bless your holy name. I love that. Your name is above every name. 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 Your name is above my problems. Your name is above my issues. Your name is above my pain. Your name is above my frustration. Your name, your name, your name, your name, your name, your name. That's it. Just call his name right there in your room. Go ahead, call his name. Just say his name. Jesus, go ahead and declare it right now. Walk around in your house and declare his name. Jesus, wherever you are, just declare his name. Jesus, come on. Open up your mouth and declare his name. There's power in his name. power in his name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful to be before you on this morning. I'm telling you, the spirit of the living God is in this place right now. I know he's in your home right now, wherever you are, just lift up your hands. Wherever you are, just lift up your hands. He wants to hear from you. All you have to do is open up your mouth. He inhabits the praises of his people. I am so grateful to be before you this morning. I want to thank God for this opportunity to share the word of God with you this morning. I thank God for Minister Denise Parker. Go ahead and heart up the screen. Give her some emojis. Go ahead. Didn't she stand tall and declare the word of God? She was preaching up in here. I'm telling you, I'm so proud of her. And she did a tremendous job. I give glory and praise to, her, to God for her gift and her ability. Well, I want to complete what's going on. You can stay there for a little bit, D. I want to complete what's been going on. Y'all know we were in this series called Budget. Y'all recall it? Y'all recall it, the series Budget? And you know we had Palm Sunday and Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday and some other Sundays. And so I have to get back because people have been asking me, what about the T, the letter T, the letter T? And so... I had to touch on it, and, and so I want to I wanna finish it up. I want to complete this series on budget, budget, budget. Y'all know the letter B was believe. The letter U was what? Understand. There you go. The letter D. I want to see if y'all got your notes. Y'all fumbling through your notes. The letter D. What was the letter D? Decisions. There you go. Well, what else did we have? We have the letter G. The letter G is for what? Generosity, how we give, right? Then we have the letter E how we want to be effective, right? 
And so the letter T, the letter T today is the word teach. Yeah. I want to talk about teach within budget. Teach. I want to share something with you, and I pray that you will receive uh, what God has given me to give to you on this morning. Because if there's ever a time that we need to make sure that our budget is in line, now is a time. As a people, we should be some more supporting all black-owned businesses, making sure we're promoting each other. This is the time that our budget and everything that we do, especially for our community and for our home, is on point. We got to make sure we're pushing. We got to make sure that we're promoting each other. And so I want to talk about this word, teach. And I want to come from Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Verse 19, chapter 10 of Ecclesiastes, verse 19, 19, and I want to read the B clause of it, and it says uh, in the New King James Version, I'm going to give it to you in the New King, I'm going to be flip-flopping with New King James and the NLT, can I do that? New King James and the NLT, and here's what it says in the B clause, B clause of Ecclesiastes 10, 19, it says, but money answers everything. Mm -hmm. But money answers everything. That, that, that's profound right there. Everybody needs money. Everybody should have some money. I, I just want to know, who don't want no money? Everybody wants some money. Everybody needs money. Everybody, watch this, should understand the waves of money. Because we do know that money is cyclical. It goes up and it, it goes down. you got to understand how money operates, right? Everybody should not love money because the love of money is, is, is the root to all evil. Don't fall in love with money because it breeds evil and bad intentions. That's what happens when we talk about money sometimes. A lot of us allow money to control us, allow money to dictate to us how we're going to operate and how we're going to function. And what happens is that when you allow money to control you, you've fallen in love with money. And that the love of money breeds, watch this, the root to all evil. Yeah. It breeds the root to all evil. So don't allow money uh, to control you. I, I, I know that some of you out there remember a show that was out some years ago called The Wire. There's a guy on there that I, uh, I, I always love to uh, call his name. His name was Omar. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Omar. Omar. Some of y'all remember the scene when Omar ran up on Marlo in his, uh, his uh, uh, gambling establishment, and he was robbing him. And Marlo said, man, that's my money. And, and, and Omar said to him, man, money don't have no owners, just spenders. I said, wow, that's powerful. He says, money doesn't have, don't have no owners, just spenders. And so what he was saying was the mere fact that uh, uh, I'm going to spend all of what I got. Because a lot of times we get money and we just spend the money. We get money and we let the money control us. We get money and we don't understand that there is a balance that we need to have with money. Because I know that you're looking at me, leaning in right now. We had great worship. We had great praise. And now we get some good teaching right now. Because a lot of times when it comes to money, uh, we don't operate in money the way that we should. I'm just going to wait till about one or two hands go up. Because, you know, sometimes you spend all of what you should not have spent. Uh, uh, we don't sow the way we're supposed to sow. We spend on something that we really don't need. We just wanted it. And we waste money. And so we're allowing money to control us. And so when, it said, when he says money don't have no owners, just spenders, he's basically saying, you know what? I'm just going to spend everything that I got and I just want more. That's why I'm robbing you. Because if you know when why Omar robbed everybody of their money and all of their uh, uh, extra uh, curricular activities. He robbed everybody because he wanted. Ah. But when you do something like that, it's the love of money that's controlling you. So what's the focus of money in the kingdom of God? I'm glad you asked that question. What's, what's the 
focus of money in the kingdom of God. I'm going to tell you what it is. It's, it's to meet the basic needs. It's to give direction. Watch this. It's to give ability to help others in the household of faith and bless those outside of the church and display the power of God. That's how money should be operating in the kingdom of God, in the household of faith. The letter is teach. So I just want to open up some things to you, and I hope that you can keep up with me. I got a lot of scriptures, but I hope that you keep up with me and that you take some notes. Here it is. The first thing is that money is for basic needs. It's for basic needs. It's for food. Come on, talk to me. Clothing. Come on. Home. Transportation. Come on. It's, be, it's to be able every now and then to take a trip every now and then. Uh, when the COVID is over, we get on a plane, even with your mask on, even though they say you, you got vaccinated and everything, but you still could take some trip. When you got money, it makes it easier. Mm -hmm. And when you ain't got no money, it's hard. And so money is for basic needs, food and clothing and home and, 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 and making sure you have everything that you need, the basic needs. Watch this, Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 6 says, if you need food to eat or water to drink, pay for them. Pay for them. In other words, in the Old Testament, it's speaking that the money is used for the basic needs. It's used for the basic needs, to, to purchase all of what you need so that you can have what you need. Y'all remember, I remember back in the day how my daddy would say to me, son, money don't grow on trees. Uh, I know some of y'all, I, I, you know, I, I, I used to look at the tree that was real green and just try to see if money would really, go. I, I know somebody out there felt like that. I know who did. Troy did. He did. He was playing out, climbing the trees. He wanted to go out there and see if money grew on the trees. <laughs> so, so, so money don't grow on trees, but that there, there, there's a reason and a purpose for money. And that money has is for basic needs. Not only is money for basic needs in, in food and clothing and home and transportation, how about this? Money can be used also to purchase land. Purchase land. We should be using our money that God has allowed us to acquire, ooh, Lord, to purchase property and to purchase land, not to waste it. Uh, some of us, we, we always claim it, oh, if I could hit the lottery, what you going to do when you really hit the lottery? Tell me the truth. You don't know what you're going to do when you hit the lottery. i tell you what you're going to do. You're going to spend it all because you're not going to know how to utilize it in a constructive way. Sometimes some people be asking for so much money, but you can't handle that which God is giving you right now. And see, money is for basic needs, for homes and food and clothing. Also to purchase property. We should be landowners and homeowners, right? That's a basic need to own something. Right? To own something. John, Jeremiah 32, verses 9 and 10. So I bought the field of Ebnoth and paying Hamel 17 pieces of silver for it. I signed and uh, sealed the deal, the deed of purchase before witness weighed out the silver and paid him. Look at that right there. We should not, not, not looking to rent, but looking to own. Basic need. To own. To purchase, it belongs to me. That's the basic need. But not only that, but also the basic need, watch this, money is to be a blessing. In other words, it's to be a blessing to whomever you come in contact with. In Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47, turn there real quick, Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47, um, says it like this. It says that we should be giving in both time and money, right? Um, 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 and, 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 and time and money. It says we should be generous and willing to give anything we can. If we don't have the money, we should serve. So listen to what it says. All believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miracles, signs, and wonders, and all of 
and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together in, at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of the, all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. So what happens is that money is used to be a blessing. I'm teaching you something, that the money that God allows you to acquire, you ought to turn around and be a blessing to someone. And if you don't have the money, your time is good too. Your ability is good too, as well as your resources. Money is to be a blessing. You can't spend it all, so you should be looking, God, how can I bless someone? How can I be a blessing to someone? We should all be looking to be a blessing primarily to those in the household of faith because that's what the scripture says, that they were blessing those in the household of faith. So that as they're blessing in the household of faith, guess what's happening? They're, everybody extended from them is getting blessed. So if I'm blessing people in the household of faith, what happens is that I turn around because I received the blessing, now I'm going to bless somebody else. You cannot expect the blessings of God to overtake you if you don't know how to give, how to sow into somebody's life, how to be a blessing to someone, how to give out of what you have. Uh, the Lord has blessed me with a lot of things, blessed me with a lot of things. And uh, the other week, uh, uh, I, I decided I was cleaning out my, my room and, and my closet. My wife and I are on this cleaning uh, 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 journey right now, just moving stuff out the way, getting everything out. And uh, I have all these shoes, and, and, and the Lord says, you can't wear them all. That's what he told me. I can't wear them all. So what I, what I do is I get the shoes. I call my man up. I know what size he wears. And so I said, man, I got some shoes for you. To be a blessing to someone. Who is it that God is telling you to be a blessing? The money that God allows you to acquire is to be a blessing to people. To sow into somebody else's life. Somebody else may not have it. Stop looking at Quartering the money that you got. But go ahead and sow into somebody's life. The money, the money is for basic needs. The money is to be a blessing. You be a blessing. You should be a blessing with your time. You should be a blessing with your resources. You should be a blessing also with uh, 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 your abilities. Hebrews 13 verse 16 says, and don't forget to do good and to share with those in need. These are the sacrifices that please God. Share with those in need. Don't allow what you have acquired to just be for you. Because someday or one day, you may hit hard times. And one day when you hit hard times, you're going to want somebody. I, I wish I, I, if I was in here, people would be clapping right now. You're going to want somebody to be kind to you. You're going to want somebody to be nice to you. Somebody to consider to be a blessing to you. Everybody knows ain't nothing wrong with receiving a blessing from somebody. Stop being so high-minded that you can't receive from somebody. Some people feel, I just, I just can't take that from you. What do you mean? Everybody that has been a product of hand-me-downs, just go ahead and lift up your hand. Come on. All the hand-me-downers. Where the hand-me? If ain't nobody hardening up the screen, they're not a hand-me-downer. If, if you know the blessings of hand-me-downs, go ahead and just hard up the screen. I, I thank God for every hand-me-down that has come to me. Praise our God. So money is a blessing. But not only is money is money is uh, is for basic needs and money is a blessing. But watch this, y'all, because a lot of times we get confused when we come to the house of the Lord and we we say, well, we got to uh, the preacher asking for some more money. 
ah, the preacher want this right here. We, we get confused, and I'm, I'm, I'm well assured there has been some teaching that has happened in years past um, and even present where some preachers are, are, are wearing all the money and driving all the money and living in all the money and flying in all the money. I understand. I understand. But can I just tell you that money is, is to support God's agenda. It's supposed to support God's agenda. I, I, I want you to write it down. Money is to support God's agenda. I already said, Ecclesiastes 10, 19, that money answers everything. Did I not say that? That means that when a ministry is pro, uh, pro, uh, pro, uh, 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 prosperous in their finances, they're able to do more. It meets the agenda that God has. It meets the agenda. It's the first agenda. It's maintenance. Write it down. Haggai chapter 1, verses 3 through 7 says, Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, It is time for you yourselves to dwell in the paneled houses, and this temple lie in ruins. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have so much and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you have not filled. You are not filled with drink. Your, your clothes, you clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. Do you hear what the word of the Lord is saying? That he's saying right here, how is it that you're more concerned about your paneled homes? Your custom-made homes? your manicured lawn, and yet the house of God lies in ruins. I know that you see it behind me. We got carpet in here. We praise God for you celebrating and sowing to, to the household of faith. We got to keep on pushing. It should not be that even in a pandemic that churches should suffer because the people aren't sowing. Ain't nobody talking to me. It got, got quiet. It, I probably got one heart right there. I just got one heart. It should be main, maintenance. It should be maintenance. But not only is it maintenance, but there's also a mission. <coughs> there's a mission that's happening here. There is a mission. Here's the mission. Matthew 28, verses 18 and 20 through 20 says, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The mission, the mission is that we got to go tell people about Jesus. And the mission is when we do missions work, when we do outreach, when we're out there sharing and giving to people, we're letting them know that guess what? Jesus loves them. And then we're inviting them to know more about Jesus. The money is to support God's agenda, the maintenance of the building, the mission, but not only that, benevolence. You know how it is. Somebody is in need of something. And when the church, when the house is full and able to disperse benevolence to those who are without. Deuteronomy 15, verses 7 and 8. But if there are any poor Israelites in your town, when you arrive in the land of the Lord, the Lord your God is giving you, do not be hard-hearted or tight towards them. Instead, be generous and lend them whatever they need. That's the benevolence. Find out what is it that they need. How can I help you? I just said that money answers all things. I'm trying to teach you that when you got money in your hand, money in your bank account, yes, you got to meet your basic needs, but then after the basic needs are met and you save something, listen, you got to make sure, God, how can you use me to be a blessing? How can you use me to help somebody? 
And you can't be, as it says here in Deuteronomy 15, you cannot be hard-hearted or tight-fisted. You got to be able to sow into somebody's life. And we should be sowing into the household of faith so that maintenance will be good, missions will be good, benevolence will be good. Watch this. Here's another one. Education. That's why we have the life class. That's why we have uh, Man Up Monday. That's why we have Warrior Wednesday. That's why we have a uh, 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 Bible, a uh, 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 vacation Bible school. Listen, it's to educate. How we educate is that there has to be money so we can purchase supplies. To educate so we can go out and do the mission. Lord, have mercy. So that we can do all of what God is telling us to do. There has to be education. Exodus 18, verse 20, it says, Teach them God's decrees and give them his instructions. so them how to conduct them. Show them how to conduct their lives. That's what the education is for, that you're learning something about God and how to function and how to live and how to conduct yourself. That's why money is to support God's agenda so that you can be better than what you were before. I know there's at least five of y'all out there that God has allowed you to come across somebody's path that has benefited from the education and learning about God to lead you to Christ. Come on up in here. Hold up the screen. Somebody led you to Christ. Somebody prayed for you because they benefited from being under some type of teaching where they can learn how to go back out and help somebody. It's the education. Not only that, we got the, we got the, we got the maintenance, we got the mission, we got benevolence, we got education, but we also got building. We got building. We ought to be building. Psalms 127 verse 1, it says, unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. Unless the Lord protects a city, guarding it with centuries will do no good. In other words, God is saying, he said, listen, we ought to be building up the house of the Lord. What can we build up for his glory? What can we build up that will bring him honor? What can we build up? We want to build. We want to reinforce everything that we got so that we can win more souls for the kingdom. I'm talking right. I know I am. Some of y'all looking at me, leaning to the side. You, done, you, done, you, you probably went out and came back in, but I know I'm talking right. I'm just trying to teach us what money is for. Don't fall in love with the love of money because the love of money will lead you down a path that you don't know nothing about what you're about to get yourself into. We should be building. That's what happens. We build. We build. Let's build. What can we build for God? I hope, I hope this is speaking to somebody. What is, what, is the, what is the maintenance? How can we take better care of what God has given us? We got new carpet up here. We got chairs. I can't wait till y'all come up in here and sit in this place and look at what God is doing. God is expanding us, and we have to build up. We got to take care of his house. This belongs to him. This ain't my house. This is his house. Here's my last one. What was my first one? Maintenance? Come on, put up the second one. What was the second one? Mission? There you go. Come on, put up the third one. Benevolence? Come on. Put up the, put up the fourth one. What else did I say? Education? Come on. Building? I see you. I see you. I see you. Here's the last one evangelism. What good is it for us to hear about Jesus and we don't tell nobody? Everybody should be uh, telling somebody about Jesus. It's, it's not about come to my virtual church and you hear my pastor preach about Jesus. You're the church. The evangelism is that what has been deposited into you to go out and to share with others. That's what it's all about. It's evangelism. 
1 Corinthians 3, verses 6 through 9, listen to what it says. I planted the seed in your hearts, and Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. It is, it is not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. The one who plants and the one who waters work together with the same purpose, and both will be rewarded for their own hard work. For we are both God's workers, and you are God's field, and you are God's building. Is that what the scripture says? He says, you are God's building. You are God's field. You are God's workers. Not this brick and mortar, but you who are looking at me. Who have you been telling Jesus about since you've been home to him? Who have you been texting about Jesus? Who have you been inviting Come on to the live. Who have you been reaching out to about our prayer time, about our recharge? Who have you been talking to about Man Up Monday and Warrior Wednesday? Who, I know, I know, I know, Pastor, I'm tired of the screen. I don't want to do no more screen. I work on the screen. I listen to people talking on the screen. People fall asleep. Some of the teachers, y'all like, I'm tired of teaching these kids. Have them sleep. They're not listening. I don't want to do it. The screen is getting on my nerve. I understand. But guess what? We cannot get tired of the gospel. The gospel has to go on. The gospel has to go on. And so since the gospel has to go on and everything about the gospel has to happen, it takes money. It takes money. That's why that last point that I had right there is that money is to support God's agenda to make sure that we're doing everything that God is telling us to do and making sure that God is in line with everything that we're saying. We got to do that. And so the, the last letter, T, is to teach. Remember that money answers all things, Ecclesiastes 10.19. But don't fall in love with, the, love with money because the love of money is the root of all evil. It'll lead you down paths that you can't even handle. It'll do things in your life because you done fell in love with it that you can't get out of. And the only one who can bring you out is Jesus. I want to encourage you. Let's do better with what God has put in our hands. Let's do better with what God has placed in our hands. I was talking to one person. They said, you know, Pastor, I, I haven't even given during the pandemic. I said, I, I said, okay. They just started talking and sharing their heart with me. I didn't condemn them. You're the worst person on this planet. How could you be a child? No. I said to them, listen, obey God. When you sow and you obey God with the money that he gives you, God makes more provisions for you beyond what you could ever imagine. When you do what you're supposed to be doing with what God is telling you to do, he will blow your mind. Every time. Every time. And it starts with a relationship. When you got a relationship with God and you know him, whenever he tells you to sow, you sow. But sometimes we don't know how to sow because we don't have a relationship with God. Because when God is living on the inside of you, he'll tell you what to do and what to, how to do it and when to do it. And you're obedient to him. And somebody say, I want, I want to be in relationship with him. I'm, I, I'm out of relationship with God. Listen, today is a great day. To begin something new. Why don't we start it today? If you've never confessed Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, you've never confessed him as Lord, you've never accepted him, today is a great day to say yes to the Lord. All you have to do is repeat after me. Just repeat after me. If you're not saved, you don't know God, don't have a relationship, repeat after me right now. Lord God, I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins right now. I need you in my life. 
God, I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that your son Jesus did die on the cross, was buried and resurrected for me. God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me new life. I give you my life from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, we want to welcome you to the family of God. We thank God for your obedience in just saying yes to his will and to his way. And if you want to be a part of our church, we would love to have you to be a part of our church. Come on. Yes, we want you to be a part as well. God is waiting on you. To God be all the glory. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, this is a great time to sow into the kingdom of God. I'm thankful that I finished this series on budget. I hope that this blessed y'all, that you understood and, and, and looked at what it is that God is saying and what God is looking for us to do. Now it's time to sow into the kingdom of God. Let's sow into the kingdom of God right now. Right now on the screen. There it is on the screen for you where you can sow right now. Sow obediently. Sow out of your relationship with God. There are multiple ways. Give la fire. Mail it in or go to our website. It's time for the people of God to rise up and sow into the kingdom of God so that the work goes on. Mm -hmm. So that we can be a blessing. So that we can make sure our basic needs are met and support God's agenda. Father, bless every seed. Multiply it for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you know how I like to end it. I love to end it. I ain't been in the church house to end it like this in a while. So I love to end it this way. <clears throat> I got to clear my throat. Are y'all clearing y'all throat? I said y'all clear y'all throat. Clear your throat. <clears> throat. Me, 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 me. Go ahead. Clear your throat. Clear your throat. Come on. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. I need you to stand up. Everybody stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Come on. Let's sing. You ready? <clears throat> you ready? The blessings of the Lord be upon you. The blessings of the Lord be upon you. The blessings of the Lord be upon you and grant you favor, strength, and life. Favor, strength, and life be multiplied. 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 The blessings of the Lord be upon you. The blessings of the Lord be upon you. The blessings of the Lord be upon you and grant you favor, strength, and life. I holler.